What's going on, everyone? Uh, time to learn how to loop uh, Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. So this is how I like to loop the song in all my streams and all that stuff. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Luan. I live stream Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Aussie time. And uh, we have a school community, and this is what one of the lessons are for, is our uh, online music school, which is free. So if you want to join in, link in description. Have fun. It's great. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit biased. But... We're going to play uh, Shape of You. So when we go to approach this, um, there's kind of like three levels to it. The first level is going to be we're going to learn the chords and then begin figuring out how we're going to set up the layers. The second one is you would learn how to sing over the top of it, how you would like to do it. Um, and then the third part will be like how are we going to arrange the layers as we play the song to create tension, resolution, make it exciting, whatever. Um, so basically... Uh, we're going to phase one right away, which is uh, we're going to figure out the parts and we're going to get the chords. So right off the bat, um, I prefer to play uh, bar chords for this one. And if I'm going to be playing it, I'm going to be doing a G sharp minor and then a C sharp minor. And then I'm playing an E chord and then F sharp major. And that's how I play the song. You can Google those chords. They're pretty easy to play. Um, no, no fancy stuff. Now, if you are a beginner when it comes to the guitar playing, and you're like, but I love looping. I have a solution for you. Um, you can just move it up one fret um, so we can move into a different key. I don't sing it in this key. And we can turn it into uh, open chords. So you can play an A minor chord and then a D minor chord. And then you can play an F chord and then a G chord. So that's for all the beginners out there if you really want to give it a shot. A minor. So that's not how I play it, so I'm not going to go further than that. Now, those are the four chords in the truth for this jam. Now, when I go to build my layers, typically I start with the harmony first because I want to get my chords out there. And it also, uh, for me personally, I get really, really cool groove um, I, I lock in with the chord playing. Uh, some people prefer doing the drums first, but you do whatever is comfortable for you. This is how I do it. So I'm going to do the guitar first. Uh, then I'm going to do the the drums. And now I've started to do like uh, vocal harmonies just because while I have the drums active, I'm using my mic. So I just go straight into my vocal harmony. Uh, and then I do bass and fills. So that's how I'm going to do this. Um, track one is my guitar track. So let's just go straight into stacking these layers. So first things first, I'm going to go first things first. I'm the realist. Anyway, it goes like this. So I got my guitar part. Bam. That's a win. I would, um, by the way, I'm going to link uh, in the description. You'll see uh, a full cover of me doing this. So if you want to look at me do it live straight off the bat, um, you can see. So I just lay down my guitar part. Normally I would just do this all on the fly. Now I'm going to go to my drum track. So I would already have that playing and then I get ready for my drums. So you can kind of do whatever you like. When it comes to me and doing beats, I try to keep it very simple. A lot of people like to do like... They do all the really, really fancy beatboxing stuff if they want to. Or they can do it with a guitar. Like you can totally do it with a guitar. Boom. I just prefer this one because I've optimized my setup to really pick up the beat of the... Like I can get that kick to sound pretty strong. Um, that's just how I've optimized my setup. I haven't figured out a way to get my, my, my smacking of the guitar to sound as good as uh, my beatbox yet. But it is what it is. And also I can get like a more, I can do really ninja stuff like. So say for instance, I do that. Let's just, uh, let's clear this um, drum track. So I can do this. So I get like a reggaeton thing. It's kind of like some, I sometimes do it. I do it for fun sometimes. So like you can you can do whatever you like. Anyway, so I get my my drum track. All right, two chord. So 
So I got that going. If you're gonna do the vocal harmonies, it's gonna be like a ooh ah ooh ah ooh ah. Um, one mistake that I have seen uh, some people do with this one is uh, anytime you're doing vocal harmonies, one thing I've found is you want to make sure that if you're going to do vocal harmonies, you do not need to stack harmonic layers. Harmonic layers is actually like a false thing that I thought I had to do. One thing that you find with Ed Sheeran is he is very, very smart. Uh, when he goes to do vocal harmonies, if the melody is changing a lot, he actually just double tracks the melody and then maybe puts like an octave lower and then he's done. Um, so with this one, it's just like it's moving. And to stack like a harmony of like thirds and fifths and all that stuff is a bit complicated. So um, when he does it, he just literally double tracks it. So that means he sings it twice. So it sounds thicker. Uh, and then he just sings uh, the lower harmony. Um, he just does an octave lower. So he sings the same thing, but just uh, it sounds lower. Um, he's not doing like some fancy like fifths and all that like rich like harmonic thing textures. So. sing the low part so I'm literally singing the same thing and um, that's going to get you the vocal harmony that you might be after um, that's how I like to do it um, that's how I watched Ed Sheeran do it and I was like oh, so clever um, typically I've heard other people when they do try to loop this they don't do that and then they try to stack like thirds and stuff and then they get because there's a lot of interval changes between the melody, they're like singing the wrong harmonies at different points because depending on where you move in the melody, the harmony, it just doesn't go like, it just doesn't chop and change. Like you're going to have to find where the notes need to move up um, a lot and move a little and they just, they make that mistake and it comes out pretty clearly sounding a bit off. Um, so that is all you really need. Um, and the reason why you're going to have that, it's going to serve as this layer of thickness that when you get to the chorus and you do sing that part, you put that on and then you can add like ad lib things. I'm in love with your body. And we're like, well, cool. Or you can just, if you're singing that as well, you can be, I like to sing that as well, but then like kind of ad lib a little bit of melodies. So you at least have that backing of, it feels like a, you know, uh, you know, a backing vocal or a, a choir or whatever behind you. Um, cool. So we got that. So we got track one, which is our guitar, our main harmony. We got our beat, and we got our harmonies on track four. Um, so I'm going to go over to the bass now. So we got. So whenever you go to do bass parts, I mean, I am in favor of just keep it simple. Um, so I've tried to do like. Like I tried to do all that, but I find that uh, um, I'm not a bass player. <laughs> so. One, I, I make really, really shit bass lines. And then the other thing is when you go looping, like always remember that um, these are, no, there's no rules to any of this. It's just, these are just like tools that I use. Um, but when it comes to arrangement and looping, um, my goal with the loops is to make an effect with my voice. Um, and if you're going through our looping course, it's free by the way, make sure you jump into it. Um, and uh, what happens is I will, just simply just keep it super simple because I wanted to add an effect to my my uh, my songs, not be like this feature. I don't want to be a one man band. I just want to add like a little bit of an effect, add a, add a add a bit of texture to what I'm doing and not take away from the song. So I experimented with fancy stuff and the fancy stuff always disconnected me with the song. Anyway, let's go. So I would just play the bass note, very simple. So I'm getting that uh 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 bum bum bum. I'm not doing any like no sign field stuff. Uh, so <laughs> just keep it simple. Is 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 the one thing I can recommend with this. And the other thing is, if you keep it simple, you will be able to stack this very fast. Now I've got all my layers got. We've got the harmony, got the drums, that. Now let's go. Let's add some fills. When it comes to fills, you can also be very fancy or be simple. So obviously I'm playing these chords, right? So all I do, <laughs> this is the trick, right? 
is I just play the top half of the chord and go like this. I just play the top three notes, top three or four notes um, of the strings. So pretty much from the D string down uh, to the high E string. So I'll just be going like. It just adds this like nice little layer, a little bit of texture. Um, you could pick it, you could do like. It doesn't need to be crazy. You don't need to be doing like. You don't need to do anything crazy like that. Just keep it simple. No crazy stuff. Because um, singing and playing this is enough of of stuff that you need to worry about. So anyway, that's how I build it. You know, so I got a guitar part. And then I got my beats. And then we've got the ooh -ah, ooh -ah, ooh -ah, ooh -ah. And then I got my bass, which is boom, boom. whatever that is. And then I add my little layer, which is just top three strings. Super simple. And that's what it sounds like. Wicked, right? Now, depending on your loop pedal, um, if you do it all on one track, I'm really, really sorry. It's gonna be hard to put everything together, but luckily we have a Looper X. And what I do with the Looper X is I will now select which song, uh, parts of the, the jam I wanna keep. So if I'm jumping into the song, it'd be like, Club is in the best place to find the love or the bar is where I go. And I will basically unmute things. So um, before we jump into this, I'm about to go pretty hard on arrangement, but um, we're going to go into phase two, which is the singing and playing of the song. So when you go to sing and, and play songs, um, just remember you want to hit listenable first, which is just get the chord changes in time with the vocal rhythm. So that means... Uh, Club is in the best place to find the love, so the bar is where I go. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, drinking pasta, and we talk slow. Come over and start up a conversation with just me, and trust me, I'll give it a chance. Now I take my hand up in the middle of the jukebox, and then we start to dance. And then once you get comfortable with that, you can start adding some strumming patterns. Um, make sure the strumming patterns aren't going too hardcore with the chord changes first. So strumming patterns... I would add first with just the right hand, no chord changes with the vocal rhythm. The club is in the best place to find the lover, so the bar is where I go. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, drinking fast, and we talk slow. Come over and start a conversation with just me. Trust me, I'll give it a chance. Take my hands up, and I'm in the jukebox, and then we start to dance. And then I'd add a club is in the best place to find the lover, so the bar is where I go. At the table doing shots, you can pass that every talk. And you can see there, I like to do like a. I'm hammering on. So if you're hearing me do that, I'm adding that little hammer on there. Um, whatever you can handle, you do. I obviously have been playing guitar for like nearly 20 years, so I can do a bunch of fancy guitar stuff. That does not mean you need to do that. Ed Sheeran hasn't been doing fancy guitar stuff, he just does what he needs to do. Um, and when he does this song, he's got like a synth pad, like whatever works for you, you do. Um, you don't need to be fancy like me, but I'm just showing you how I approach it. So you will just extract the way I approach it and then put it your way and then have heaps of fun. So um, that's how you want to approach the singing and playing. Once you get that down, um, the singing and playing should start to come together. That'll take a bit of time, you know, before you really get into looping this song, um, if you really, really want to, and you've got the loops down, I prefer to play because there's a dynamicness to playing. Um, what happens is when you're looping the whole thing, like I could effectively just play like the loop and just follow the loop. Club is in the best place to find the love, so the bar is where I go. Be my friends at the table But you can see how it just, you, that means whoever is listening is listening to the same accenting the same playing of whatever that is and um there's no dynamicness to the guitar playing so that's why i will always favor playing the song um like that because then i can be like so i can create dynamics in my guitar playing and be very clever and so then when this comes in i can just be like mm. 
has like this fat big hit um, because it's all rich and it's and it's a new um, sound that's coming into people's ears. So yeah, um, sing and play the guitar, just practice it, play through those chords. It's the same chords. Um, and then get the vocal rhythms in time. Uh, don't stress about getting the lyrics and the melody perfect, but if you can get the vocal rhythm with the chord changes down, um, I'll be super proud of you. So love isn't the best place to find the lovers, so the bar is where I go. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, drink the bars, then we talk slow. So you can see as, as simple as you want the chord progression to be, you can do it that way. Club isn't the best place to find the lovers, so the bar is where I go. At the table doing shots, drink a glass, and we talk slow. When we start a conversation with just me, trust me, I'll give it a chance. You can make it really, really straight. I obviously have more dynamics to my my rhythms, and that's kind of my style, you know? Um, cool. So that's stage two completed. Sing and play the song, jump in, have heaps of fun. Now, this is the magic stuff. This is arrangement. So now that I have my loop. I have to decide how I want the song to go. If you have one track, you only have really one option, which is or nothing at all. Um, but if you have a multi-track looper, like an RC300 or a 600 or the Looper X, like we have, we can start to take things out. So. So you can see I'm, I'm walking through in mute mode with, with how the, the Looper X works. So this is the very, very fun stuff. Um, this is where you kind of do whatever you want. Now, um, I follow like a tension resolution. I, I want I want to create like uh, tension and then I want to resolve it. And the way I do that is by setting up a certain level of dynamics and then delivering on the, on the promise and then pulling back and then pumping out like volume and how much stuff is happening is usually what I use in the arrangement to make it sound very, very cool and fancy and it feel like it's always moving, it's always dynamic. And um, it will it will make you sound way bigger and more engaging than, um, than you expect. So typically, verse one, I'm just gonna play through the song. And I'll do that. Now that verse will come all in all, you know, I want your love, your love, and I'll do that little pre-chorusy thing that he does. Um, and then when I get into the chorus, I don't have the eyes on. I just go, mm. I'm in love with you, love. and then we get smash that bad boy out. And then when I come into the second half of the chorus. And that's what I'll do with that one. Now, one thing I'll do is that from there, you can either do it like this. I I kind of set myself, it's a little bit of a stressful moment because I get to the... Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with the shape of one weekend, but let the story begin. So you saw how I was like, I turned off the whole loop and then I, I turned off the eyes and I turned off the guitar to set it up when I come back in, it's just bass and drums. And that's how I will like go from a huge energy to like 75% energy in the second verse. And what that also leads me to do is from there. So I'll be like, when we can we let the story begin. We're going out on our first day. And so that's what I'll do there. <laughs> you can hear me talking. <laughs> I recorded myself talking, feels bad. Um, and then what I'll do is then I will add my own playing over the top. I don't add the guitar part because that's a bit thicker. I will just add like a really subtle guitar part. For somebody like me, now follow my lead, now follow my lead. Mm -hmm. Now this part here is the, the trick, right? I don't go straight into the chorus. People are going to assume that I'm a, like, you would just go ham on the chorus. But the second chorus, I'll be like, um, I'd be like, I'm in love with the sheep of you. Sheep like a man to do. So I'm just like being super subtle. That chorus is like, I went from a 75 down to a, like a 50. And I'm like just chilling. Like there's not a lot happening in that moment. I'm just like. Love 
with the shape of you. And that lets me set it up. And then I grab my other stuff. Ready? I'm in love. And I'm about to go all in on the second half of the chorus. On the all eyes. If you're wondering how to play a guitar solo over this, because we're playing a G sharp minor, I play G sharp minor pentatonic. For everyone who knows how to play guitar solos, that's applicable to you. If you don't know how to do it, don't do it. I mean, you can learn, but uh, just G sharp minor pentatonic. Google it if you can't figure it out. But if if I mean, just I'll help you guys either way. So if we're going from the E string, just Super simple version. Uh, from the E string, the low E, you're going four seven four six four six four six four seven four seven. And if you're really really beginner at it, um, when you're doing your guitar solos, we have an improvisation course. Jump into it if you need help. Um, but keep it keep it super simple. So um, I'll be like. And then I get to the come on be my baby part. Now, when I get to that come on be my baby, I just sit on the one, that G sharp minor chord. I just sit on that same chord. And I do like some Jimi Hendrix. Now, I can either just come in and I'm in love with the sheep of you, yeah. The sheep you like a man to do. Or I could go in and play it, whatever you want to do. But I keep that first chorus, that first half of the chorus at the end, I keep it super chill. I'm in love with the sheep of you. The sheep you like a man to do. And my heart is falling too, yeah. I'm in love with your body, yeah. Last night she put in my room. And in my bed she smelled like you. Every day discovering something brand. Bring it all in. I'm in love with your body. And that's, and that's pretty much how I'm going to loop this bad boy. So you can see how you can think about these things. And, and that's exactly how I'm thinking when I do it. Um, I'm not, and I will change. Like if I'm feeling like I need more control, like say for instance, I'm playing a live show and, I, and I'm like, I want to really bring people in. To draw people in, uh, you actually want to diminish what you do. So you want to like bring stuff down, like super quiet. Like the more you, the more of the distance of dynamic range that you can create, you will attract people. If I want to just keep it like pumping because I just don't care, and I'm like, let's go, oots, 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 then I will pretty much just be like, shape of you, shape of you, shape of you, blah, blah, blah. And, then, and then I'll just add the the vocal harmony over top of it, but. That's that's kind of how I see it. Um, and if you want to be really, really, <laughs> like if you want to be really clever, like say this is something I'm experimenting with, um, is uh, in the last chorus, sometimes I'll do this. So I'll be like, come on, be my baby, come on, come on. I'm going to slowly stagger the, in, the, the, uh, the effects coming in. Be my baby, come on, come on, be my baby, come on. So you see how like slowly came in moving your body yeah. last night she put in my room. And then my bed she smelled like you Every day discovering something brand new yeah. I'm in love with your body And now you can see how that really does That's a lot of movement happening There's a lot of like tapping that's going on But you can see that it, it really does um, Create a lot of dynamics and a lot of like energy so 
that's how I that's something I'm experimenting with. I, I'm trying to figure out what the mute mode is. It's it's something that I'm enjoying with this Looper X. It's it's a it's a new layer of like experimentation that I find with my looping and and arranging. But that's how I would think about it. So um, have fun, enjoy it. Um, this you do not have to do what I do. I would highly recommend, uh, especially if you are uh, less not as good as me. Uh, like when you're learning stuff, go to learn stuff from people that are amazing. Like I learned how to do this by watching Ed Sheeran, but then I did it my way. Um, so look, look at what I do. And if it intrigues you, learn how to replicate it, at least like kind of replicate it. So you know exactly what's going on. And then you will take whatever lessons and tools that you get from it and apply it to your own thing. Cause what I do doesn't matter, but if you're a beginner or intermediate and, or, or if anything I'm doing is piquing an interest in you, you'd be like, okay, well, what is he doing? Let's figure it out. Let's copy it. And then I'm going to go do my own thing. Um, I'm personally not someone who encourages note for note covers because the time it takes for you to like completely perfect a song, you could learn like five, 10, 20 songs by that point. Um, but if you really, really want to nail one song, go ahead and nail one song. Like, um, but I'm obviously not doing exactly what Ed Sheeran does. I don't have a synth thing effect, but I just, you know, take what I liked out of his arrangement and his song. And then I just did it my way. And, um, yeah, hopefully this serves you and helps you improve your skills with the Looper X or with whatever Looper you have. Um, just work with, within the parameters that you have, uh, for your songs and hopefully it's wicked, but yeah, that's it. That's it. Have fun, y'all, and uh, I'll see you guys in the in the next video. Let's rock and roll.